Good morning, First Baptist Church, our members in the Springfield area, but also our members who extend so far and wide, our larger community of faith. I am so thankful that you have tuned in to our worship this morning. As we continue to worship virtually, we also continue to cling to the good news that Jesus Christ is risen. This is the second Sunday of Easter, looking at the church calendar. And we continue to reflect on the good news and, and, and grasp the hope, the joy, just the new life that we know because of the incredible love of God. Uh, I, I, I echo that which has been said several times. Though the church may continue to be empty, we celebrate of the good news that so was the tomb. For he is risen. We continue to celebrate, and as we celebrate, we take time to be intentional about our worship. And as we worship, uh, we, we do have several announcements. We have some good news to share. Uh, we'll have a moment with children and, and just uh, time to, to reflect on the goodness of God. Uh, so let's join together in a brief word of prayer. Dear God, we, we thank you for this time that we have. We thank you for this time that is a gift from you. And as we receive that gift, we, we commit ourselves to being good stewards. Uh, we will focus and, and be intentional during this time of worship. We will bless your holy name. All that is within us, we will celebrate you and the good news that Christ is risen. And as we reflect on that, oh God, move in our midst that we may go deeper in our relationship with you, that our faith may grow stronger in commitment to you as we grow into who you have called us to be. Oh God, help us to continue to be faithful as the church. In so many ways, we've been reminded that the church is not a building, but it is the people, oh God. And so we pray that we will continue to be the people that you have called us to be, the body of Christ. We pray these things in his matchless name, saying together, Amen. Now, beloved, let us join together as we lift a joyful noise unto the Lord.
time for the moment with children. Uh, come on and meet me down here on the stairs. Hey guys, uh, pass along greetings from the gang. Uh, they are not able to join us this morning. They are on virtual tour. Can you believe that? My goodness, going here and there and everywhere on their virtual tour, sharing with others. But when they do make it back, we'll join together again. Hey, look, I appreciate you all who were able to grab your instrument. Shout out to you. Man, that was a good time last week. Uh, but if you weren't able to join in, it's all good. They'll get back from tour and we'll be able to do it again sometime soon. So don't worry. All right. Don't worry. Uh, I want to share a, a word with you all. Don't know how familiar you are with it, but it's it's FOMO. If you know what it means, go ahead and say it. Shout it back to the screen. FOMO. It means fear of missing out. This is when. Let's say you're a senior in high school and everybody else is going to this cool senior event while you have to study for an exam you have coming up. Man, if you had to be the only senior there studying while everybody else is somewhere having fun, you would feel FOMO. Like, oh man, I'm missing out. Everybody else having a good time. I'm the only one that's not going to enjoy it. Oh my God. Ah, ah. FOMO. That's FOMO right there. Don't know if doctors diagnose it, but it's a real thing. Okay. Well, FOMO, um, got to tell you about somebody who missed out. So check it out. Jesus showed up to the disciples as a risen king. They had seen him uh, crucified. They had seen him put into the tomb, the stone rolled in front of it. Well, now they're joined together in a house. They have the doors locked and shut tightly. But Jesus shows up and he says, look, you don't have to be afraid. Peace be with you. And they celebrate and they have such a good time. It's like a joyous celebration right then and there. And one person is not there and his name is Thomas. Oh my goodness. You talk about missing out. This is the greatest thing ever. Jesus is alive. Our savior, our friend, our leader, he's alive. Thomas isn't there. Oh, can you imagine the FOMO? Goodness gracious, that's some incredibly missing out business right there. Uh, but, but something incredible happens. A week later, Jesus shows up and addresses Thomas personally, saying, peace be with you, and, and, and shows himself saying, look, it's me. And Thomas has his own moment to appreciate, his own moment to celebrate. And he says, my Lord, my God which is a wonderful way of just saying hallelujah and expressing his faith. But, but here's the thing. Look, we might have times of FOMO. Not might. We will. We will have times of FOMO because there will be things that we simply can't avoid missing out on. But when that happens, we don't have to let fear, FOMO, rule over us. But our Savior, our risen Savior, tells us to have peace, trusting that Jesus is going to show up for us. Look, we might have FOMO thinking, look, we got to miss out on camp. We got to miss out on VBS. We got to miss out on Sunday school or, or different things that we might miss out on. And, and really, man, that stinks. And it's like, ah, oh, FOMO, FOMO, FOMO. No, replace the FOMO with peace. Trusting that Jesus is going to show up for you and for you and for you and for you and for you. Jesus is going to show up in a special way. And when that happens, we have to be like the disciples. We have to share with others that may have missed out. And so that they will be able to experience Jesus in their own way in a very special uh, life giving type of way. Beloved, FOMO does not have to have the final say, uh, but, but we can have peace trusting that Jesus is going to show up in a special way for us. Let's pray together. Dear God, uh, we, we, we thank you for your risen son. We thank you for a Jesus who is alive. And oh God, we, we pray that we will be uh, attentive 
to the ways that we can experience that new life, that we can encounter that new life, oh God. And when we do miss out on things, help us remember the peace that is available to us through your son. And as we miss out, let us just look ahead. Let us keep on going knowing that we're going to that we're going to have an incredible encounter of our own. God, we thank you for that promise. We trust you and we pray all of this in Jesus name. Amen. Dear friends, the time has come for our offering and I have good news to share. As a reminder, we've been collecting a special offering to go in partnership with Second Harvest Food Bank helping to meet the need of many in our community who are without essential toiletries during this time. Well, beloved, we have not only exceeded our goal, but we have more than doubled the amount that we have set as a mark to, to go in partnership with our partners in Ministry Second Harvest Food Bank. And so I just thank you. I, I thank you and again say hallelujah. Because uh, because God, uh, God is doing some amazing things in the life of the church, but also just in the life of creation. And that is why we give. That is the purpose. That's what we're trying to do. And it wouldn't be possible without you. So I thank you so very much. Uh, we do continue to collect just for our fellowship fund. Uh, being mindful of the many needs that those in our congregation and those in our community will need during this time and the great emergency that is at hand. And so uh, we, we designate our, our offering toward fellowship fund if we feel led to give to that fund. Uh, the, the check is still made out to First Baptist Church, but we, we move that in a separate category away from our general fund, which goes to support the general ministries of the church. Again, I thank you for your support and praise God for what God is doing in the life of the church. Dear friends, I again thank you for your contributions and for your sacrifices. And I say that because recognizing the uncertainty of right now, the unknown of tomorrow or maybe even the next moment, that which we uh, set to the side as offering is sacrifice. And so I thank you for that. And as we make these sacrifices, thinking about the greater good, thinking about our neighbors, thinking about God's creation. I trust that God will provide our every need according to God's riches and glory through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Trusting that, let's join together in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for these gifts, for these sacrifices, and pray your blessing be upon this offering that it may go forth uh, just to, to bring glory to your name, O oh God, to honor our neighbors, to empower, to equip the, the ministries of this, your church, O oh God, and to, to honor uh, our neighbors who might be in need and to, to strengthen our partnership with Second Harvest Food Bank. God, we pray your blessing over this offering, but we also pray your blessing over those who have given. We pray your blessing over those who have made sacrifice and, and pray that you continue to provide, oh God. We look to you uh, as our provider, uh, providing not only the material items that we might be in need of, uh, but providing spiritual comfort, uh, pro providing the, the intangibles, providing the things that we can't even put into words, but oh God, we give you thanks for providing those things, oh God. Uh, we, we, we pray that we might be 
reliable partners to our neighbors, to our, to our spouses, to our children, to our parents, uh, doing that which brings honor to those around us, O oh God, and that truly reflects your goodness, the goodness that you have created us to be able to reflect, O oh God, help us to do that in faithfulness to the calling that you have extended unto us. God, as we continue to navigate this season, we pray that nothing rules in our hearts other than your love. God, we, we, we pray that in Jesus' name. And, and, and while there are so many things that bring us discomfort right now, while there are clouds, while there is some doubt, while, while there are things that, that, that may eat away at us like a thorn in the flesh, oh God, we trust in your grace. We trust in your grace. And even as we sit with the discomfort, we also sit holding on to your hand, trusting in your grace that, that it is sufficient. Now, oh God, we, 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 we give you thanks most for the life, the hope that we know in Jesus the Christ. And now we pray that prayer that he taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. Let us listen now for the word of the Lord. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. So beloved, the disciples are on lockdown. You know, Jesus had, had appeared to a group of disciples uh, on the day of his resurrection. He shows up while they are on lockdown. Jesus shows up forget about that lock, and is in their presence bringing peace unto these individuals, unto this group that is really being ruled by fear at the moment. You know, the, the text says that they are, are, are behind shut doors with a lock on the doors. And that lock, I believe, represents that which happens when fear rules over our hearts. Now, beloved, let's be clear. Fear in itself is not evil. It's not irrational. You know, if there was a group that had killed a dear friend of yours, a leader of yours, a homie, a homegirl, whatever it is, if there was a group that had murdered somebody near and dear to you, it would not be irrational for you to have fear of that group. 
um, or, or where we are right now. It's not completely irrational for us to have fear of COVID-19, for, for us to have fear of certain things that are associated with a virus or to have fear for, uh, of, of certain unknown um, um, realities of where we are right now. It's not totally irrational, but the Spirit of God, the presence of the Lord, Jesus the Christ, offers us peace. And, and truly, the text reveals to us a, a peace that is available to, to us through our faith in Jesus. And when we have that peace through our faith, we find freedom. Uh, and, and in fear, we are, are on lockdown. You know, we might not want to speak to anybody, not, not even going and being close to somebody else, but just I don't want to talk to anybody right now out of fear. It's got me on lockdown. It's got me on shutdown. Um, but, but in faith, through Jesus, who offers us peace, we are able to recognize the freedom uh, that, that no lock is able to shut down, that fear is not able to withhold or, or, or have dominion over. And, and, and we, we, we find that Jesus, that Jesus offers us a liberation uh, that, that nothing else, nothing else can offer. And so in, in that, we give thanks unto God as the text provides just that bit of good news. But as we go on and focusing on our text today, Thomas was not with that first group. Uh, Jesus had shown up again, appeared to, to that group on the day of his resurrection. Well, a whole week later, this time Thomas is with the group. However, everybody is still on lockdown. Let me say that again. Everybody is still on lockdown. Not just Thomas, not just the person that says, unless I see it, um, unless I'm able to reach my fingers into, unless I'm able to reach my hand not, not until I see it. Not just Thomas, but really Thomas' words. Thomas is an individual that represents the larger group who is still being ruled by this fear. However, while fear is the ruler at the beginning, beginning of the text, we see that through his wonderful proclamation that faith, woo, faith is that which reigns supreme when our text comes to a conclusion. As a matter of fact, uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas, his doubts, uh, his, his, his expression of that which will help him in his faith, in his journey, in his relationship with the Lord. As he says, unless I see that, and provides those things that still are holding him back a little bit. But as he faces it, and as he is, is real about it, and truly, authentically expresses it, God doesn't say, you know, forget you, to you know where with you. No. Jesus shows up and provides the very things that he has said he needed. And so in that, uh, we, are, we are comforted, we are encouraged to know that we can express the things that, that, that might hold back our faith. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, we call ourselves believers. However, many of us have become believers because we had questions, because we had doubts, because we had things that made us wonder uh, that we weren't certain of. But in many ways, God has shown up. Jesus has shown up. The Spirit has shown up and, and, and helped us and, and strengthened our faith and our belief, making us believers. And we continue in a journey. If we're faithful, like Thomas, we continue in a journey of, of exploration and growth in our faith. Uh, so, so as he as he expresses this, Jesus does not discard his existence, but really honors him. And, and in response, he has the greatest Christological confession in the whole gospel. And he says, my Lord and my God. But once again, this is an expression on behalf of the whole gathering, the whole community of faith, all of the disciples. And so while fear dominated at the beginning, faith is reigning supreme in the end as they all are able to recognize Jesus, my Lord, my God. Beloved, there are, there are certain things that, that 
the Spirit is leading us to do in response to this text, in response to this word. And it is my prayer, you know, as your pastor or as the pastor of this message, I say, follow the Spirit's leading, period, okay? But as a community here with First Baptist Church, there are certain things that we can do. And and so if you are not following the spirit, shame on you. okay? because that's first and foremost in the life of a believer. Follow the spirit and the spirit is going to guide you to do that which is encouraging and beneficial for God's creation. Okay, so follow the spirit, follow the spirit, follow the spirit. But the things that I list and offer to you right now are those that the spirit has led me, has led the life of the church leaders in the church to to make available to us as a community of faith, okay? And so one thing that we can do is in the same way that Thomas exercises and grows in his faith, whether he's expressing doubts or the greatest Christological confession in all of the gospel, Uh, whatever it is, and as he's growing in his faith, he's doing it in community. All of this is taking place amongst the believers, amongst the questioners, amongst the doubters, amongst the community of faith. And so uh, as a community of faith, we can do something on Facebook and it's called Praise in Pajamas. To be very clear, this movement is not about your pajamas, but this hashtag Praise in Pajamas is about submitting authentic praise unto God. And the pajamas is just to give us the idea of when we wake up in the morning and God places something on our heart and we just say, thank you, Jesus. We say, praise the Lord. We say, hallelujah, or we sing that tune or we think about that story of, or whatever it might be. Uh, We're sharing that as we go to the First Baptist Church of Springfield Facebook group. We're able to see one another's praise. And again, as a community, some of us are expressing the things that are weighing on us, some of our questions, some of our uncertainties, some of our doubts, Um, but we're doing so in a community of faith. And what that is doing is breaking those locks that others might have over them. And as community of faith, faith is reigning supreme. And in that faith, we're finding freedom. And so as we're sharing these praise, hashtag praise in pajamas, uh, we're doing so as a community, um, again, benefiting the larger, the larger community. Uh, we, we do have individual journeys, but, but, but this thing can't happen. Faith does not happen absent of community. Um, so that's one thing, the praise in pajamas. The way that you can participate is message me on Facebook with your video, okay? Whether you're singing, whether you're sharing a testimony, uh, whether you're playing an instrument, just lifting a joyful noise, however you want to give God the praise, go ahead and do so. Send me the message, and I'm posting those on Tuesdays and Thursdays, all right? So that's one thing, praise in pajamas. Another thing is circles of hope. Circles of hope is our, our, our way of doing small groups. And right now, you know, the, the Spirit has led me, the Spirit has led leaders in the congregation to engage in these groups that simply are to help us remain connected. Uh, that, that fear or, or that sadness, that the uncertainty, that doubts right now, that's not what's ruling us. But faith, and as a community of faith, we're, we're again finding that freedom as we remain connected to one another through our circles of hope. And really, it's however you want to be involved, okay? We have different leaders of the circles who are contacting individuals or who are sharing and leading conversation of the circles as a whole. And they're doing that in the ways that people feel comfortable. Whether you want to join in on a screen, a Zoom conference video chat, uh, you can do that because, because circle leaders are ready. They're, they're, they're ready to get it going with their groups over Zoom or over Facebook 
a uh, video chat or, or these different platforms through which we can hold those types of meetings. Some of us are working all day on Zoom and we're having these video chats all day and so we're not trying to be doing any more of that. But we would appreciate a text message, a group text message thread that we can check up on one another, that we can share what's, what's on our hearts, that we can share our praise, that we can share our concerns and just remain connected. And so we have circle leaders doing that. We have circle leaders who are making individual phone calls and hosting conference calls. We have circle leaders who are, who are leading via email uh, individually or group email. Um, but, but the point is that we will remain connected uh, with one another, even as we are physically distanced, we'll, we'll be intentional in the way that we remain spiritually united, okay? So our circles of hope is another way for us to, to respond, for us to be led to um, engage in what the Spirit is leading us to do in response to our text and as we seek to be a good community of faith in the midst of our current circumstances, uh, remaining united and remaining focused on the peace of Christ. So we pray all of this. All of this has been said and shared in Jesus' name. And may we move forward in that matchless name as well. Amen. Now, dear friends, we'll join together and lifting another joyful noise unto the Lord. One day when heaven is filled with his praises, one day when sin was black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and light shined among us, glory i 
Dear friends, our time has come to an end, but before we do click out or go away or move on to the next thing, I want to remind you of our praise in pajamas. Please share your praise. Also, our circles of hope, uh, be ready to respond to messages being shared with you that we may be able to remain connected as a community of faith. Also, beloved, uh, you are invited to join in as we share with one another an adult forum being held on Zoom at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. Now, as we go from this time unto the next, may we go remaining united by the spirit that does tie our hearts together. May we go uh, being emboldened and empowered by Jesus the Christ, and may we go truly cherishing the wonderful love of God. May the peace of Christ be with you.